So let's talk about the battle value of battle value and using it efficiently. We're going to do a little bit of, of mathematical calculations here. We're going to crunch some numbers on here. And this is unlike Fritz because I'm a man of passion in war games. You issue a challenge. I must accept the challenge. Never tell me the odds. And if there's a chance for tabletop glory, even though I, I know it's probably not going to happen, if there's a chance for tabletop glory, we have to take it. That's why Death from Above happens like out of one in every three or four games uh, when I play it, because I, I can't resist that, right? But I'm going to take a step back and, and try to look at this matrix, this understanding, a little bit more competitively. Because we all have a player personality, and even if that's not necessarily your player personality, it's important to understand it, because there might be times where you have to be um, a little more aggressive in how you, you utilize your battle value. So there's this idea of fairness in a war game, although this tends to mostly be, side tangent for a moment, sci-fi based war games, um, stuff like Battletech, Warhammer 40,000. We don't see this as much in historical war gaming. Up Chain of Command World War II, when I explore that, there is a, a point system, but often what you find is depends on the attacker, the defender, the scenario, depends on the time period of the war. Early war, late war, Fortress Europe, how are we looking at things? Because we're trying to recreate something very, very specific on the table. Now, that's not to say in Battletech you can't do that. You could have an attacker versus defender scenario. I've got a base with some mechs and some tanks, and I'm overwhelmed three to one, and I have to just survive, I don't know, six, seven game turns, and then my drop ships arrive, and, and I live if I survive. There are times when you can play where things are out of balance. But for the most part, Battletech is balanced. You're going to play 3,000 battle value. I'm going to play 3,000 battle value. Buy whatever you want. Or maybe we make an agreement just mechs or mechs and combined arms or limit it to one air unit on there. But this idea is by spending these points, by spending these points, it's about equal. It's close to being fair, you know, as fair as such a complicated game can be. So with that battle value, that represents your potential on the table. That represents, in theory, your ability through tactics to affect the game. And at the start of the game, your battle value is at its highest. And then as the game progresses and you take losses, either just you made some poor decisions, you made some necessary sacrifices, the dice went against you, but you're going to be taking losses, getting weaker and weaker and weaker in battle value. That, that, that's going to go down as is your opponent. Now, you hope your opponents go down faster than you go down. And many people approach wargaming from this perspective. And it might be simplistic, but it, it works, right? I mean, if I blow up your stuff faster than you're blowing up my stuff, I'm going to win in the game there. But there's also this idea of a second level of using battle value where how do we leverage it? And the reason why we want to leverage it is... With a dice-based game, and I love dice-based games. I know some people uh, war games with cards, but I like the dice because, yes, it's random. It simulates the fog of war. There's that moment, especially in Battletech, where you're like, I haven't had a headshot in three games. I need this now. I need this now. The dice gods, and you, you, know, you roll that out. Um, another great example of the dice with the tension not that you ever want to get shot at, but if I shoot at you with a medium laser, you're like, okay, just, just tell me if you hit and tell me the hit location. And I roll the dice and whatever. Even if I'm at long range and you have maximum movement modifiers and I need 12s to hit you with an auto cannon 20, when I declare that shot and it's time to roll to hit, you know you're looking. I know you're looking. You're there. Fritz needs 12s. It's probably not going to get it. But AC-20 gets everybody's attention on there. So this is the idea of leveraging battle value to control the dice and to control the swing of the game. So what we want to do, a couple of ideas to control battle value. Um, I have my lance. Let's say it's 4 mechs versus your 4 mechs on there. We're just going head to head. The beginning of the game, I'm not leveraging my battle value because I'm not in shooting range yet. But as I advance, I need to make a decision when we enter into range, if my mechs are close enough to each other based on the weapons and everyone's in that range band, 
they can all they can all shoot together. So uh, let's let me throw out some some mechs. Um, let's say I've got um, Battlemaster. I got to remember this. Battlemaster, Warhammer. Pick at some of my favorites here. Shadowhawk, Shadowhawk, because we were looking at the Shadowhawk, and uh, the Thorn. I, I actually utilize the Thorn a lot as a light mech. Each one of those mechs has long range capacity. Uh, the PPC, the auto cannon, the uh, long range missile five pack on there. So in leveraging that out, leveraging your battle value means once everything is in long range and everything can shoot, the battle value is active. You're utilizing it. So the battle value of my thorn, my light mech, I, whatever, is it six something? I mean, I, I don't remember exactly, but let's say it's six something battle value. That turn, I'm utilizing all 600 and something points of battle value because it's shooting, because it's having a direct impact against my opponent. The idea with the Warhammer, it costs more battle value, but in theory, maybe I'm leveraging both of those PPCs at long range on there. So if I keep all of my mechs relatively close, relatively together, this idea of a threat bubble on the table, pushing out the hexes, if a target comes into range and everything can shoot, for that turn I'm getting the maximum efficient use of battle value. I make another decision, and I'm not saying right or wrong. This is just a way to analyze, to get the most out of it. Uh, let's say I'm advancing with my three mechs, my Shadowhawk, my Warhammer, my Battlemaster. I, I take the Thorn and I make the decision, I'm going to detach it from the Lance, and I'm going to run up the side of the table. You know, there's some hills, I'll, I will be out of line of sight, I'll work my way around, and, and now I've got a little skirmisher shooting my long-range missiles from your deployment zone on, on your mechs or your vehicles on there. If I make that decision, that takes potentially takes that battle value out of the game for a couple of rounds. So now as the rest of my lance advances, when it's the shooting phase, I've got the PPC on the Battlemaster, the two on the Warhammer, I'll push that heat, and I've got the Auto Cannon on the Shadowhawk shooting at long range. That battle value is engaged, for that turn, my Thorn's battle value, because it's running through those hills, is not engaged. I'm not making the most efficient use of my battle value on there. Because if you're not engaging with everything, it's not potentially leveraging it. Now, if we look at this idea that, you know, obviously the Battle Master has a lot more battle value than the Thorn, this idea, if you don't engage and you lose that battle value, if it's of lesser battle value, it's not as much of a disadvantage. That thorn is taken out because in this example, it's running up the side of the table. I'm not fully utilizing that battle value, but it's not a lot of battle value. So weighing the tactical situation of getting, spending one or two turns to get in a better position, okay, you know, that, that, that's probably a good trade. But if for some reason I decided to send the battle master up the side, how many turns is it going to take? three, four, five turns to get into position, that's a thousand plus, that's a K plus in battle value that I'm not utilizing from that. That's a significant amount of battle value. I probably don't want to do that. So this is a way you can see turn by turn based on the shooting and based on what's engaged, are you leveraging the most battle value against your opponent? Now it also goes towards picking out your target on there. I want to try and throw as much battle value as I can on a single target. So in this example, um, let's say another mech was advancing. doesn't even matter what it is. It's in range. I want to shoot the PPC on the Battlemaster. I want to shoot the two PPCs on, on the Warhammer, push the heat. I want the Auto Cannon and I want the LRM-5 on the Thorn and the Auto Cannon on the Shadowhawk. I want to shoot at everything. I want to declare at everything. I want to take my maximum battle value and throw it against the battle value of my opponent on a single target on there. So utilizing it from this point of view, trying to play a little bit more competitive, a little more scientific, a little bit more mech commander-like, as opposed to just going in there and blasting everything up. Although, you know, you could do that. So look at battle value as a way to balance your forces and have a somewhat fair game, but also look at it as a, as a weight, an internal weight in the game, turn by turn, keeping in mind, potentially, every single turn, you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker. You're losing battle value. And, and I can't even begin to crunch the numbers here, 
But if I have, um, if I'm sending, I was going to say my Orion, I'm sending my T-bolt up there and you hit me and I take some damage and you blow off my arm with the large laser, I, I'm still up, but I lost some battle value. The battle value to calculate that armor on the arm, the battle value to calculate that laser, that large laser, I, I just lost, you know, whatever, 120 battle value. I'm being reduced. So literally every hit, even if it doesn't take you out, is reducing battle value in the game. 